climate change, I don't know. That's, a, that's an iffy one, that is. I think it's real. And uh, I think that if we don't do something about it now, uh, we're going to pay for it later. Climate change, um, biggest fraud ever perpetrated. I actually don't know. I honestly don't know. I feel like I don't know the answers because there are so many different theories. There seems to be a lot of confusion and mistrust around climate change in the public domain. It's a difficult story to take on board and to understand what it means for all of us. So what did the public think about climate change compared to what scientists are telling us? And how has the media dealt with this story? As scientists, we are learning how human activities and technologies are affecting climate systems in ways that may forever change life on Earth. These were some of the stark trends and images which have inspired an historic worldwide movement, the battle against climate change. The biggest challenge our civilization has ever had to face up to. Climate change Hang on now. is true. Global warming is a political construction. We can quite different we things. Climate change. climate change summit in Copenhagen appears to be in a state of crisis on several fronts. And the scientists no, 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 are worried no, 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 because no, no, they're no, no, here. No, 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 no
an intensification of weather patterns. We had a consensus about BSE, we had a consensus about killer bees were going to kill us all. We've had these scares before. We, we had this, the, isn't, this isn't a scare, this is a fundamental reality here. We're dealing with a huge amount of scientific evidence. I've got a feeling it'll turn out the same way as it always does with these catastrophes that are going to happen. It'll be like the Millennium Book. Nothing will happen. To be fair, I don't really notice it as much as it's made out to be. It's more like a newspaper thing. I tend to notice it a lot in the newspapers, more like a scaremongering, as opposed to actually noticing it in day-to-day -day life. Major shifts in our climate may not be as apparent to us as changes in our daily weather. So how do scientists record and measure global climate trends compared to local weather fluctuations. OK, well, the global mean temperature is, is calculated by taking measurements from covering the entire globe, the entire Earth. The surface temperature is measured by satellites and by a range of instruments on ships and on land stations. But on top of that, of course, is the weather, the large variations in temperature from place to place and time to time. So temperature fluctuations due to changing weather conditions all over the world can be huge. But the global mean average temperature varies on a much narrower range. So if a global mean average temperature was five degrees lower, or even five degrees higher than it is today, what sort of difference would that be? Well, it could mean a very significant changes. It doesn't sound like very much, but when we remember that the average global temperature during the last ice age was only five or six degrees lower than it is today, we can see that this is very significant. And a rise of five degrees in temperature would be catastrophic, would have major impacts. We are told that the Earth's climate is changing. But the Earth's climate is always changing. I agree, our climate is changing, our climate has always changed. It cooled in the middle of the last century, it, is, it has risen again and it is now static. It hasn't gone up in the last six years. What I've seen on television about the Arctic and the Antarctic and the drought in Africa and various other places, there seems to be something going on all right, but whether it's a, a natural cycle or not, I'm not quite sure. I don't know whether the, the sums add up. Half of me thinks it's happening naturally anyway, which is, you know, a, a pretty common view out there. Maybe we're contributing to what's happening, and then again, maybe we're not. Maybe it's, maybe it's a natural process. Change. The climate is changing, the climate will continue to change. Humankind... There are so many conflicting views in the public domain. So how do scientists respond to the popular perception that climate is changing, but that it's a natural cycle? Well, I think it's true to say that climate has always changed. Um, it's part and parcel of the climate system to undergo change. Where we're standing at the moment was once buried in several hundred metres of ice, after all. And this is a normal part of the climate system. Uh, over long periods of time, very dramatic changes do take place. We have observed many ice ages over the past 100,000 years. These are known to be associated with changes in the Earth's orbit and they occur over long periods. And at the moment, the overall trend due to the changes in the orbit should be for a very gradual cooling of the planet, as I say, over the coming thousands of years. However, what we're actually observing in the last hundred years is a warming. So it raises a question, of course, as to what's going on. I heard that it's a bad thing, I guess, uh, due to the ozone and all that type of thing. But I'm not well informed about that subject at all. You hear all the, the, the stuff that's thrown at us, protect the ozone layer or CFC gases, whatever. But to the man on the streets, we don't actually know what I can personally do. I remember in the, the early 90s, it was all about the, the ozone layer. Where is the ozone layer? So what did happen to the ozone layer? Well, the ozone in the stratosphere, this is the upper atmosphere, was broken down by chemical reactions. And the chemicals in question were chlorofluorocarbons, or CFCs. These are artificial chemicals 
uh, which are used in air conditioning systems and fridges and so on. It took some brilliant scientific research to find out what was going on. But once we found out, we put in place an international ban on the manufacture and distribution of these harmful chemicals. And that was agreed in the Montreal Protocol. So this really is a success story of environmental action. The ozone hole, as it was called, is now gradually recovering. It will take about 100 years to get back to its, uh, the level it was at before this event, but we're going in the right direction. Most of us have an intuition that the planet is kind of finite now and what it can absorb. Uh, we've had a few wake-up calls. We had the first kind of shock was the ozone depletion problem. And we realized that ozone protects us basically from radiation, which causes skin cancer. I'm missing a piece of my ear here because I got a melanoma, for example, which could well have been induced by ozone depletion. Most people knew about the problem with the ozone layer, but very few of us seemed to know how it was resolved. Frank's story is a reminder that we may not always be aware of how we're being affected by the world around us. Climate change is an even bigger science story. And given the complex nature of it, I headed back to see John Sweeney to revisit the basics of the science behind it. And perhaps the best way of explaining it is to actually look at some of these processes in terms of what the uh, Earth's atmosphere is composed of. Well, you can see here that uh, the Earth's atmosphere is composed mainly of, of nitrogen, in fact, about 80% with about 20% oxygen, but there are some trace gases in it, um, most notably water vapour, carbon dioxide and methane. These are the greenhouse gases which exert a disproportionate amount of influence on the flows of energy to and from the surface. You can see that they allow the incoming shortwave radiation from the sun to make it all the way down to the surface and keep us warm down at the surface. But they stop the outgoing longwave radiation from the Earth from actually escaping. Without them, the Earth would be a very cold place, would be at a temperature of about minus 18 degrees centigrade. So they're natural, they're essential, and uh, without them we wouldn't really have a habitable Earth. But if we have too much of them, if the concentration increases too much, then we begin to get problems because we begin to trap too much heat close to the surface, and this can cause the surface air temperature to warm up. So how much has the planet actually warmed up? Well, when we assemble all of the observations of temperature on the planet over the past century, we find it's warmed up by about 0.7 degrees. That's important because we know that once we get to certain levels of temperature increase, things may happen that may surprise us. 